इति कथम धर्म इति the translation is but the jiva is endowed with ego and its knowledge is limited where is ishwara is without ego and is omniscient then how can they be identical and stated in the mahamahavakya <coughs> that tomasi that thou art and between these two there is there are contradictory characteristics i repeat again the meaning but the jiva is endowed with ego and its knowledge is limited whereas ishwara is without ego and it omniscient then how can they be identical as stated in the mahavakya tattvamasi that the art as between these two there are contradictory characteristics tattva udasis there is no difference between jiva and ishwar jiva means individual soul they are one they are not two now the question arises in tattvoda sankracharya says there is no difference god and individual self soul are one <clears throat> they are not different is there any proof in scriptures in vedas what is ground of this great statement how can you say this jiva and ishwara are one not two our experiences says they are very different and there are so many philosophies they are also says that they are very different there are so many religions they are also say jiva and ishwara are very different very different characteristics they cannot be one so this is statement statement very doubt this is the question to understand this 
subject we have to have to understand a story which is related in this mahavakya once upon a time there was a prominent rishi family this was the family of aruni and his son udyalak and his son shetak so three generations three generations the third generation the swet ketu that time was very young just 12 year old he was enjoying his childhood one day his father udyalak told his son that now you are told he 12 year old that is time for you you should go to a school and live their religious life as a normal child of that age Shwet Ketu was also not reluctant to go to school. He was enjoying his childhood games. He said, no, I am good. I don't want to go to school. But his father said, no. you have to go to school in our family there is no any person who who is unlearned in our family anyone not uneducated we are great family learn it and his father was also a great master he was a great teacher but he did not initiate him he did not initiate him because <clears throat> in this system in this education the most important part is discipline discipline makes disciple obvious obviously he was a father and in this education the master should be very strict sometime father cannot be so strict that is why he thought he should go to school finally shet ke tu baad ready to go to school he his father said i know my friends he had a big gurkul you go there said he to went when he went to school a gurukul he was 12 year old and he studied there 12 years in between this time no communication
No communication. He did not come back for a summer vacation or any vacation. And his father also did not go to school to meet him. So no communication, just study, study, study. Twelve years passed. He became a learned person. He became a great master. He studied all, all scriptures in front of his master. So after having completed his studies, he returned to her father, his father. Now he is 24. And consider, considering himself, will read. And he thought, I am a very learned person. I am a great master. My father, I think he is not so learned. So he became arrogant. He came in the house. His father saw him and his arrogance. His father was very careful. He want proper development of his son, which had not happened. He studied scriptures, but the result of the study he did not see in his face. So father was very brilliant, very learned. Great master. Now he can understand that. Now he can follow me. He is used to disciple sheep. So I can now discipline him. He requires little push. So father sent him Fred Ketu. You are a learned person will read, my dear, have you heard, have you asked the other for that instructions? Shri Ketu asked which instructions? The father said, by knowing one, everything unknown becomes known. That through which unread becomes read, unheard becomes heard, unknown becomes known. This is the teaching. Shri Ketu becomes surprised, puzzled. He thought, my father is so brilliant. And he asked me, his father, no father, I don't know. And I think this is not possible. This is not possible. The father said, yes, this is the last teaching. This is the last instructions. And then he started giving lessons, a great story says. He gave so many examples. And lastly, finally, he says, Dr. Thomas. The great sentence, Shri Ketu said, Father, 
I think my teacher did not know that. Or if they had known it, why should they have not told me? That Thomas. So Udyala was the greatest master that time. And he gave the son message, Tattvamasi, you are the Brahman, you are the soul, you are the consciousness, you are the supreme, you are the absolute, you are not conditioned in the body, you are not only limited soul, you are the absolute, Tattvamasi. In our Vedas, <coughs> there are four Vedas, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda, Riga Veda, Atharva Veda. And every Veda has for everyone. Veda is for everyone. There are so many labels for humanity. So Veda is for everyone, not for only, only for centralization. But if someone wants to do rituals, Veda says yes. Veda gives rituals there. So there are so many rituals. The next part of the Vedas is Upasana, devotion. The second level, first level is rituals, like a nursery. Then next level is upasana, devos. So there are so many types, upasana, devotion. And finally, last level is knowledge. We call it Upanishad. Upanishad. And in Upanishad also, there are four great sentences. Four great sentences. You can say that these four great sentences are the essence of the Veda. Four great sentences are, are the climax of the peak of the Vedas. The all purpose of the Vedas is the four sentences. Here, we are thinking about Tattvamasi. This is also great sentence, Mahavakya. It came, it comes in Chandogya Upanishad. It is Samaveda Upanishad. Tat Thomas. Now we think, why are they great sentences? What is greatness of them? Great, greatest son, greatest. They are so small, Tat Thomas. Aham Brahmasmi, Agyanam Brahm, Ayam Atma Brahm. They are so small, but they are Mahavaki great sentences. What is their greatness? They are very small. Only three words. Tat, Tam, Asi. So there is no Greatness in the sentence, in the words, the greatness is in the meanings. Meaning, they carry the greatest meaning of the word. That thou art Tattvamasi. The sentence carry the sentence had 
greatest meaning of the world. Now, we understand, we try to understand what is the meaning. Jiva and Isha, individual soul and collective soul. First, we understand, let's understand what the Jiva is. There are so many concepts about Jiva. All religions have faith in Jiva. Some believe in God, some do not believe in God. Undoubtedly, all religions believe in Jiva, individual soul. Because if there is no Jiva, no individual soul, no conditioned soul, then religion is not possible. Religious teachings is not possible without Jiva. Who will perform if there is no Jiva? Then who will listen? Who will perform? Who will follow of religion? And why? If there is no Jiva, then why the religion or whom the religion? So every religion, every religion in this world believe in the Jiva. They would be different, different. The definition of the Jiva. different opinion, but Jiva is must. Some may say that Jiva is inside in the heart, in the brain, in the ear and there, in the eye, what the side of the Jiva there may be differences, but every religion, every religion accept that inside body there must be some consciousness who operates mind, who operates organ of perception who operates organ of actions in an instrument. Because of Jiva, body's inner organs like heart, lungs, liver, all are working. In presence of Jiva, in presence of Jiva, all organs are working. The body is working mind working for whom? Only for Jiva. So Jiva is the must. Individual the soul is must. Everyone working, everything is working for Jiva. Individual soul. When Jiva, individual soul, abundance, this body and takes another body, new one, and play he continue. He changes bodies. As Jiva is the same, he is traveling. So this way, every religion in different concept accept Jiva. Our religions are only for Jiva. 
there is no any religion for god there is no religion for objects god is beyond religion objects does not understand religion so all religion all philosophy all morality is possible when we accept the jiva existence of the jiva so every every religion every philosophy in different opinion in different definitions they accept the jiva it is no problem now let us understand isha what the god as we discussed before sometimes there are so many philosophy who does not believe in the god there is no god no god no collective soul but among us of some believe in the god as there are so many religions so logics to believe in god existence of the god and not non existence of the god there are so many logics it may topic of debate this is topic not for understanding so there are two two third two types of philosophy who believe in god and who does not believe in the god but do 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 believe in the god when we believe in the god automatically this concept comes in our mind god is god is more superior than jiva in check guess here what jiva is jiva knowledge is limited limited and god's knowledge is unlimited the difference is jiva's knowledge is limited we can see unlimited things we can hear unlimited sounds but for god there is no limit unlimit everywhere every thing omniscient god knows so this is a basic difference kinchit gyasya jivasya the definition of the jiva is here kinchit gyasya who has limited knowledge and god is omniscient in chit gets here so in our mind immediately thought comes god is different from us because he knows everything and i know very little things he is superior and god is doing everything god is doing everything he is only present only seeing only potent he has all powers so god is doing everything jiva is helpless he is not able to move a small grass blade as jiva is a puppet in the hand of god god is controller jiva is controller so very different and there are so many controversies this is not topic here but some philosophy says 
Jiva cannot do anything. God does everything. God does everything. But the very basic difference is God is everywhere. He can do anything. But Jiva is nothing. He cannot do anything. So there are so many theories. Jiva's duty is do action. Jiva can do action. And God's duty is to give its fruit. So there is a limit. Our limit is work properly, do our duties perfectly, rightly, correctly. And its fruit is in hand of the God. But we are trying always to do action and its fruit also. That's why Lord Sri Krishna in Gita so many times said to Arjuna, you don't interfere in my job. You do your job. Your job is work. My job is to give its fruit. So God is playing with his condition. God's condition is Maya. That is why we call Leela. He's playing with his condition. And Jiva, the individual soul, is playing with Avidya. So both are playing with their labels. So this is a God. This is small introduction. Jiva is limited. God is unlimited. Jiva is controlled. God is controller. Jiva's condition is avidya, God's condition is maya. So they look very different. They look very, they appear very differently. And we are happy. If God is different, I am the different, so we are very happy. Those who do not believe in God, and those to believe in the God, there is no much difference. Because the concept of the gods, we have the concept of the God, is not much meaning. We are here in this earth in this world and God is somewhere else in heaven in Baikunt Kailas I am here the thought of duality does not make differences in our lives so much difference I am here in this earth. God is somewhere else. We don't know where. How much distance in which look he's sitting, he's watching. We don't know difference. We don't know distance. And here also. We have made temples, churches, 
masks or God. God is there. So someone go to Sunday, the church is Sunday religion. Someone Friday. And someone weekly. So some become weekly religious, monthly religious, morning religious, There are, according to our, our convenience, we accept God according to our convenience, whatever suits to us. We go to temple on the Sunday, Monday, any day, and having done some rituals, some chanting, some prayers, and our religiousness is over. We are free. God is also free. We have done our responsibility towards God. So sometimes religiousness, only Sunday, only Monday, or only morning, and the, our duty is over. That is why we like this duality. We love this dualism. We are here, God is there. We love this dualism because we are safe. No risk. So after Sunday, yeah, or after Monday, Monday we do fast. Next Tuesday, I can eat meat. Because Monday is the religious day. So that day, I will not eat meat. Even I will not have uh, food else because Monday is religious. But when Tuesday comes, I become unreligious. I can eat anything. So this concept comes because of duality. We are very safe. We love this spirituality because without risk, this is the agreement with God. You do your job, I do my job. You stay in the temples, I am in my home. And when we go to temple in front of the God, we pray to him and we say, give us blessings. Blessings. Or, or fulfill our desire. So God is becomes a meaning for worldly things. God is just become a meaning to fulfill our desires. Vedanta says, Vedanta says, this religiousness is not working properly. You will not improve. Nothing will, nothing will going to happen. Nothing is going, going to change in lives. If you want reality, if you want to change it, understand the Vedanta. Vedanta says no. You cannot be separate from the God. You cannot be separate from the godly root, godliness. Any time, it may be Sunday, it may be Monday, any day, any month, any period, any space. So this religiousness, 
each hand is with you. Listen your nature. So non-dualism says you, individual soul, and God, collective soul, they appear in two, but they are not two. They are one. Now the problem is to understand how how they are one, because it appears very different. They are not same. So Vedanta says, we have to understand upadhi, avidya upadhi san, atma jiva uchate, maya upadhi san, ishara uchate. Evam sarvagyattu visishta ishara tatpad vacharta upadhi shunyam shuddha chaitanyam tatpad lakcharta. Nas thuna sukshma sarira vimani tampad vacharta upadhi niramuktam samadhi dasa sampannam suttam chaitanyam tampad lakcharta. First, listen the meaning. Na sthula sukshma sarira vimani tampad lakcharta. No, it is not so. As we see, they are different, their characters are different. Tattvoda says no, it is not so. The literal meaning of the word Tao is the one who identifies himself, the gross and subtle body. The impiled meaning of the word Tao is pure awareness, which is free from all conditioning and which is appreciated in the state of Samadhi. Now, Ishara. Evam sarvagyat tuadi visishta ishara tatpad vacharta upadi shunyam shuddha chaitanyam tatpad lakcharta. So, also the literal meaning of the word that is the ishara having consciousness, etc. The impaled meaning of the word that is the pure awareness free of all conditions. Evam jiva ishara yo. Chaitanya Rupena Vede Vedaka Bhava. Thus, there is no contradiction regarding the identity between Jiva and Ishara from the standpoint of the awareness. Ishara appears collective soul, Jiva appears conditioned soul. So, conditioned soul and collective soul is not one. That is true. What one Tom and Tat? Tom is you. Uddhyanak says to Swet Ketu, you and God is one. So you means what? The literally meaning is you embodied, embodied consciousness with avidya, who knows subtle body and gross body as identified. This is literally meaning of the you. But Vedanta says here another meaning implied meaning, indirect meaning, like when we go somewhere, we are on the road and we want a taxi to go somewhere. And we call a taxi. We use word taxi, what word does mean? Taxi does not mean taxi. Taxi means taxi driver. Because taxi cannot hear. So our taxi means taxi driver, not taxi. Same, the taxi driver when take his car 
especially in the garage. And he told the mechanic, my taxi is giving some problems. So please check. Here taxi does not mean driver. Here taxi means taxi. So word, Tom has two meanings, direct and indirect. So direct meaning is embodied soul. But indirect meaning is soul, not body. Only soul. And same, Tom and the, the God, collective soul. So collectiveness, the Maya has to remove only soul. There is only soul. So condition of the God is Maya, just remove. Here, that means not only limited in Maya, only consciousness. So, Ishwara is also consciousness, Jiva is also consciousness. So, both are the consciousness. The conditions are different. Condi Jeeva's conditions are avidya, body, or God's conditions is Maya. So, just forget Maya and avidya. Take the part, consciousness, Jiva is also consciousness, Ishara is also consciousness, both have the consciousness, and consciousness are the same. There is no two consciousness. Consciousness is the one. So this way, Ishara and Jiva is not two, they are one. Om Purnamadaha Purnamidam Purna Purna Mudachate Purnasya Purna Madaya Purna Meva Vasisyate Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Sankaracharyam Keshavam Vadarayanam Sutra Bhashya Kritau Vande Gavantau Puna Puna Isharu Guru Rapmiti, Murti Veda Vibhagini, Vyoma Vadavyata Dehaya, Dachina Murtai Namaha, Om Santis Santis Santis.